Jeff Gordon wins the 41st Daytona 500. Eminem dropped his Slim Shady album, Nigeria has elected their first president since 1983, and Pluto regains its status as the solar system's outermost planet after moving further away from the sun than Neptune. Folks, I am Hossman Comics, and I'm here to tell you what happened in comics 25 years ago this month. It is February 1999, and Marvel only published 37 books. 27 of which landed in the top 50. DC, however, put out 79 total books, and honestly, their books didn't fare so well. Though they did technically burst into the top five for the first time since March 1997, and that was when Electric Blue Superman debuted. Though the stuff in the top five now technically wasn't even DC proper, so thank you, Jim Lee. Number one issues of note this month include The Hulk, Planetary, Our Man, a new version of The Crow, and Evangeline. If you remember last month, Titans number one debuted at 23, it dropped all the way down to 31 for its second issue. Now here's a little game I like to play called, hey, what beat Superman this month? Action Comics is arguably the headline title of DC Comics, right? First and foremost, Action Comics number one debuted Superman, started off the whole thing. So what beat Action Comics this month? Kiss, Psycho Circus number 17. It sold about 2,600 more issues than Action Comics number 753. The number 11 through number 21 selling spots were all Marvel. In fact, DC only had three books in the top 10, and as I said, only one of them is actually under the DC imprint. The next true DC book after that is Green Lantern. He's all the way down in spot number 30. But again, DC did make more money just due to sheer volume. So now for the top 10 of February 1999. Number 10 is Daredevil number 6. It's up from number 12 last month. It's part of Kevin Smith's Guardian Devil story that he was writing at the time. Having a big name writer like Kevin Smith on the book at the time was a huge deal. Number 9 is JLA number 28. It's holding steady in the ninth spot. DC is still proving that it's better to get 7 heroes for the price of 1. Number 8 this month is Wolverine number 137. It's down a bit from last month's number 7, but it's still Wolverine. He's still X-Men, so it sells well. The number 7 spot is Avengers number 15. It's also dropped one spot from number six. Number six, Spawn number 83. That falls out of the top five to make room for other image titles that technically aren't image anymore. We'll get to those in a sec. Number five, Hold Study as Earth X number one debuts. Again, that was Marvel's trying to be Kingdom Come, but it didn't quite work. But I mean, it sold well, so. Number four is Danger Girl number five. This issue was actually solicited for September 1998, but the whole Wildstorm sale to DC caused that delay, which actually works out for DC because they get some top selling books this month. It's roughly 16,487 less units that were ordered previously. That discrepancy is more issues than Transmetropolitan number 20 sold, which was in the number 122 spot. Spot number three is Battle Chasers number five. Again, it's the same situation as Danger Girl, except it actually got about 2,000 or so more issues printed, putting it nicely in the number three spot. I've honestly never been a big indie guy. I don't know anything about Battle Chasers outside of the name, really. I couldn't tell you what it's about or who's in it, but... I do know the name Battle Chaser, so that says something. Do, 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 do. In the number two spot is X-Men number 87. It keeps its number two spot, and along with number one, it finished off the Magneto War while No Man Land marches down getting no higher than 34. Uncanny X-Men number 367, it claims the top spot for the second month in a row. And it's not the second month because it's only the second video I've done. In December 98, the top selling comic was Tomb Raider slash Witchblade number one. So what can I say? Sex sells. Due to the sheer volume of issues, DC did make more money than Marvel, like 300,000 more dollars. But honestly, I think at this time, DC is really doing a lot better, their books are better, more quality, while Marvel is just kind of doing everything. Taking a look back with 25 years of hindsight, this period for the JLA is looked on very fondly, as well as Batman No Man's Land. And Marvel didn't really have much iconic going on besides Kevin Smith on Daredevil. There were things like Mutant X and Spider-Girl they're looked back on fondly, but they're slowly getting lost to time. Even Earth X isn't remembered anything like Kingdom Come, which is considered essential reading 28 years later. Anyway, folks, I've been Hossman. Please let me know down below if you remember any of these things or what you remember from this time. And be sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you're new here. And until next time, stay Hossie. Bah, bah, bah.